I bless the Lord for each and every one of us that has made it today. And um, I pray that uh, Flo has just retaliated what was in my heart. That even as we come here every day, let it not be said that you just came and went back. As you come, what, what is the prayer of your heart? What is the desire in your heart concerning this particular conference? The Lord says to us, go forward. And one of the things I believe is God does not just speak to us to go forward. It's because, what was last year's theme? What was last year's theme? Yes? Break free. Break free. So after you're being liberated, what happens after that? Because at times when you have independence without discipline, uh, people lose it. So kindly, Minister Sarah, get me Minister Dorisila Kujokumbele. We just give honor to where it is due. We know we are very humble ministers. Hallelujah. Bibile nasema, usijipeleke. Na pia kuna mchungaji mwingine nimejaribu lakini bado amenipiga chenga. We go to Exodus chapter number 14 where our theme comes from. Exodus chapter number 14. And this story is a story we have heard right from Sunday school, right? And um, one of my friends, a very good friend, says that when you read scripture, stop running through scripture. Just walk through it. Just be patient when you're reading it. Amen. And um, Exodus chapter 14, we will read. And I'll begin from verse 1. The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and then cut before Pihahiroth, between Migdol and the sea of Balziphon. Before it shall before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. Please mark that. Pharaoh said of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And verse 4 says, and I, who is I, God? God says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. At that point, I want you to look at your neighbor straight in the eyes and tell them, there are some warfares that are not sent by the devil. Yeah, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that is God speaking, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. Why is God hardening Pharaoh's heart and causing him to follow after Israel? And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. And the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So before you begin binding in that warfare, watch Mungu ajitukuze. Verse 5 says, And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? Are they the ones who let Israel go? Are they? It is God who caused it. Yet the same God who caused it to happen, the same God says that I will harden Pharaoh's heart and let them. Let him follow after the Israelites. Verse 6 says, And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And mind you, when the Bible talks about Pharaoh making his chariot, he's not talking about some, some watchmen somewhere. I mean, Pharaoh was mighty in his time. He had forces and, and forces of likened probably to the army of Kenya and even more than that. 
The Bible says in verse 6, and he made ready his chariot and took his people. That is what the word chariot stands for, his armies. And he took 600 chosen chariots, eh? the special forces, and all the chariots of Egypt, all the chariots of, and captains over every one of them. He did not take soldiers. He did not take cadets. He took the ones that were in charge of every army. Commander Wakila base. Those are the people that Pharaoh was going with to follow after the Israelites. And verse 7 says, sorry, verse 8, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. And all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them. What did they do? What did they do? And overtook them and camping by the sea beside Piha Heroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. At least they did not forget whose they are. That when the armies came, and we have seen the, the dimension of this army, it was not just some kind of an army. The Bible says when they drew nigh, meaning that at times we don't pray because the battle is not in our front. Okay, let us continue. Verse 11, and they say to Moses, imagine after crying to the Lord, and they say to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have you dealt with us? Wherefore have you dealt with this with us? To carry us forth out of Egypt. Now they are complaining again. Is this not the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Hmm. And Moses said to the people, I love Moses. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Fear. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you this day, not tomorrow, today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall not see them again, not more forever. And then verse 14, the Bible says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And then verse 15, that, this is Moses, after people are complaining. First of all, these people cry to the Lord. After they cry to the Lord, they remember, ah, ah. It is this Moses that used to talk to the Lord in the mountains. You, Moses, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you leave us to continue serving in bondage? We, we were just okay. But at least we had food. They had land where they could bury us. They had Langata Cemetery. Probably it was Egyptian cemetery. Now you have brought us into the wilderness to die here. And Moses, instead of uh, retaliating the same way the children of Israel are doing, he's telling them, today, today, this God that you're accusing me of talking to, I know him. And today he's going to deal with these enemies once and for all. And, but, but the children of Israel are looking and they, they think Moses is not serious. And then Moses continues to tell them, the Lord shall fight for you. You will not need to fight, he will fight for you. So what you need to do, hold your peace. Have you ever been in a situation where um, you know every other thing is crazy, but when you talk to your pastor, your pastor is telling you, hold your peace. The Lord is going, I need another pastor that will give me a prophetic word. The Bible says that the word of God is the surest word of prophecy. And then the verse 15 says, and the Lord said to Moses, remember, God did not tell Moses, 
Why are the children of Israel crying to me? He told Moses, wherefore are you crying to me? Why? Because according to God, God was able to interact with Moses to a point that he was able to know that everything he said to Moses, Moses was faithful enough to pass it on to the generations. And by the way, the Israelites who are in Egypt for 430 years, please, not 43 years. It is 43 times 10. And you know, I was just trying to imagine, those are about 43 decades generations have come and generations have gone. Meaning these people have served in Egypt. They have seen people get old and buried. They have given birth to children. But Moses was never afraid to go and face the king because the Lord had spoken to him. And the Bible says, and the Lord said to Moses, wherefore do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel. that they go forward. Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Today the Lord is speaking to the children of emeralds <laughs> and telling them, go forward. And uh, just like the story of Moses is, I know I have men in this house, but I'd want to speak particularly to the ladies. And I know the men can relate because they live with one of them or many of them. They might be sisters, they might be cousins, they might be wives, but they live in a community where ladies are present. And um, there are things when we look at our lives. The other day, a certain young lady was explaining to me her birth experience and uh, how she had to go back to the theater a second time because they had forgotten a placenta within her womb. After I think um, about three hours of surgery, then they remembered. And that is, th that is how human beings operate. We forget. Look at your neighbor, tell them, forgive me, I forget. And when she was bleeding, they looked at the children and they realized, like on a triplet, she's a member of our church, and they realized that the, one of the, the, uh, the twins to the triplets are sharing one umbilical cord, meaning that there were two placentas because an umbilical cord does not, does not grow from any other place but from a placenta. So there's one of the triplets that had an umbilical cord by the, himself, and then these other two shared one. So the placentas were two. That alone is enough to, to let you know that this God is amazing. And she was taken back to the theater a second. They opened her up again. Removed whatever they were supposed to remove. We thank God it is a placenta. Some, uh, it is scissors that was forgotten. Some, it is uh, cotton wool. <laughs> Some is saying doctor's lunch. And uh, one of the things that I'd want to, to say to us is that uh, when God, when God wants to, to move you forward, he will not use the way you want him to use. The children of Israel, probably in the 430 years that they stayed in Egypt, some of them even stopped praying about being set free. And as, as God spoke to us in the past year, that we are breaking free, and indeed there are people that I believe took their freedom, took their whatever, everything that God had intended for them. But here we are, a whole year has passed. Some of the things that you, you broke free from, you broke free, but you have not gone forward. You have not moved. You're still reminiscing of of where the past, of what happened. The children of Israel, when God spoke to Moses and told them, 
first of all, God summoned Aaron and Moses. And he told them what he wants to do after talking to Moses. Why? Because Moses needed help. It is okay. Let them, let them make noise. I, I tell anyone that gets offended when they hear the cries of children, they don't know the meaning of life. Any place you go and you hear children, eh? it means that there is life. And then, God tells Moses and Aaron that I want these people that have been here for 130 years to be set free and I want them to go forward. This is not the land I promised them. There are times, beloved, you can stay in a situation for too long until you begin to accept it as the will of God. Anything that is not in the word of God, my friend, go forward. It is not the will of God for you. I love what one celebrity said in Kenya. She got married, I think, at 35. And she said, I was willing to wait longer if the right man was not coming. Not long ago, so many of us are the ones that ask others, to a jam. Do you have a supermarket where people take husbands so that we can bring our daughters to take husbands? There's no any other way. You have to wait. So don't sit. There are people that have been single for so long until they say, I think it is the will of God for me to be celibate. Don't try to call yourself where God has not called you. Because things are not changing. You've been praying for your family. Instead of people getting born again, they are becoming worse. And you begin to say, probably the witch that bewitched us died. Haven't you read that the Lord at the cross bore everything and he made an open show of triumphing over every principality, every wickedness. Bwana sifiwe. So whatever we do as we walk on earth, as we continue to go forward, is we affect the word of God. So this was the kind of situation in Israel, in Egypt, sorry, with the Israelites. And I'm imagining Mababu Zao and, and generations had come and they had talked about God. But a younger generation was here. They had seen the things that God had done, how God had fed them, how God, the plagues are just a way of God telling Pharaoh and the children of Israel that he is God. But even in all this, can you imagine a nation that has been in another nation? I don't want to mention a nation in Kenya because some of them are your uncles. But there are nations that have stayed in Kenya for so long. But I just think of 430 years. The Israelites were in Egypt for 430 years. Now imagine God is saying, I want you to gather all these people and I want you to go. Are you going to make that announcement in secret? How are you going to, when I think about the marching of the, of the Israelites into the wilderness, that is why there were too many for Moses to keep on shouting. That is why God had to lead them with a pillar of cloud by the day. And by the night, he would, he would put a, a pillar of fire to light their path. God has been able to lead you all your life to where you are today. Yet the reason why you cannot be able to trust him for the next place that is taking you baffles my heart and baffles my mind. And apart from that, it baffles God. Because God is saying, I have wanted you to go forward for so long. I've sent angels you did not discern. And God sent angels in the name of Kamau, in the name of Atieno. But you are waiting to see people with wings. That is why you've been missing it. You're not able to discern. One has son. And the Bible says that the children of Israel, after God has, has given the strategy to Moses and is telling him, I want you to go to the king and tell them, the Lord has sent me for you to let his people go. Now God had had in heart your Pharaoh. And then the plagues came. After the plagues, somehow they left. So I want you to picture this. As you go forward, there's something I want you to know. That the pace that you will go forward with is not the same with everyone. Because for 430 years, there are children that were wali kwa dogo kama wale. 
they were teenagers. They were young adults. They were people that were old. During those days, people lived 400 years, some. So someone that lived 400 years and another one is 10 years, their pace cannot be the same. Yet God told them, I want you to go forward. God was not mindful about their pace because he knew as God, he is going to make sure all of them match to where he's telling them. Some of us are not going forward because the people around us are not moving. So you feel like if you go forward ahead of them, utawakuwaza. Angalia jirani yako mambia naenda mbele. That is why, even if you're the one people have known as the one who intercedes for others, like Anna, the prophetess Anna, who stayed. She was married, I think, for only three years. And then the rest of her days, she spent, into the, she spent in the temple doing what? Interceding for the coming of Jesus. When Jesus was born, prophetess Anna says, Blessed be the Lord that I've been able to see the fulfillment of the things that I've been praying for. That is called peace. Someone else was a widow, like uh, Ruth, but she was remarried. When they get remarried, please, acha kwa na kinyongo. Jikumbushe tu hata mimi nikienda mbele pole pole tu nikona God. Bwana asifiwe. Remind yourself. When you see other people's lives blossom, when you hear that they have been promoted, please go forward with them, celebrate with them because your time is coming. Our pace will be different, but that time is coming. Bwana asifiwe. Usiseme hiyo committee hata sitaenda. Hata sitawaambia. Do you know God is very interesting. When God gives you an instruction and you don't obey, God has never run short of manpower, never. Never. He will just pick the next person that is available. Na kwanza ule mwenye huko ukifikiria, yeye ndio Mungu atachukua. So just as Moses is obeying and this whole people are going and they are not only human beings. They are carrying together with their cattle. With their herds of things that they had. So ni wanyama na wanadamu. And they are going into the wilderness. Now I want you to see how God, how interesting God is. That even an entire nation is leaving another nation. Yet this nation does awana abari. Wanagundua na chindwala. Wale, wale wa, wanini, sita kuwasema. Dorin majirani zako. Wale watu, walienda wapi wana? Easy mall zimebaki empty. What happened? God happened. There are things in your life that God is going to do forward that you will not be able, people will not be able to put an explanation of what God is doing. Because that is what makes him God. This God that you can explain how he moves, what time he enters a meeting, is your own God. The God I know comes when he pleases. I mean, he sits in the praise of the people. So for 430 years, people are in slavery until they are gotten used to. I want you to think about your life. What is this kind of bondage that you've sat in? You have prayed, you have believed God. And you know today in church, both in, in both divides, married and married, ladies, gentlemen, sexual sin has become very comfortable has become the order of the day. That after all, it is my life. We know it is your life, but you belong to a body. I want you to know that when you disappoint others, you also hurt us as a body. We love you, but we don't like the way you're living. It is time for you to move forward. Because we have to go together as a body. That is why the children of Israel... All of them got the same instruction and left the same night. All of them. Why? Because we are a body of Christ. We make up the body of Christ. Whatever is happening is that our paces are different, but we are all moving forward. So stop laughing at someone else. Because they are not moving at your pace. 
And you know it is only in the kingdom of God that God allows overtaking. That God would allow the people that are pursuing his people to overtake them. And you know I'm imagining when the chariots were overtaking the children of Israel, how they were, what they were thinking. Mulitoka jana, nyimuli on foot, si tu kona nini. And then God says that I'm hardening the heart of Pharaoh. I want him to follow after these people because at the end of the day, I want to glorify myself. Some of the pains that you have hidden, some of the scars that you're hiding from people is what God would want to glorify himself with in your life. I'm telling you. When I read Exodus chapter 12, in the olden days, kulikuwa bia kwe sabuwa na ume peke yake, the men were counted to 600,000 only. Men only. And you know the saying as, as it goes, one man is equal to how many women? Hmm? How many? So fanyo ya sabu, na hiyo ni hiyo time, eh? Labda walikuwa mo. 600 times 7. We have not counted the children. One has a few. So meaning these were people in their millions. And then, in Egypt, these people had, had lived for 430 years. When you live with someone, when you get married, those of you that are married, and those of us that are married, when you get married into a certain home, I'm married in Seme. I come from Bunyore. <laughs> I don't peleka Bunyore in Seme. Sawa? It is the Seme to come to Bunyore. Meaning that there's a culture I'll begin to adapt to because of the environment. Those of you who get married and ukienda ushago, you swear. Siyezi pita kwa mama yangu duhu ndo niende. Wewe, wewe. We need a class. The Bible says, you, and you shall live. It is the men who don't live because we go to them. But the Bible actually commands them to live. Because sisi, atas kuya wedding, mtu anavruta sanduku yako, ukia mboga, my friend, ume live. You have left. But the thing is, what I'm just trying to say, when, just like when you get married, you stay there for so long until 10 years later your siblings ask you, so how did you even learn Kikamba? You're coming from Luya land. We think that you are Mweni. Ah, kumbe weni wepukulu na anjala. We thought you are Mweni. Why? Because you have adapted to the culture. Beloved, let me tell you, take care of your environment. In this season that God is moving us, who are your friends? Who are the company that you keep? Because the truth is, isi biblia ni wasemaji wa English na kiswahili that one, one fish that is rotten, if it is put in a basket full of fresh fish, what happens? It becomes fresh. What happens? So my friend, with the power of the Holy Ghost that you have, when you stay in the middle of Sodom, sooner or later, you'll find yourself at the center of Sodom. Who are these people that are informing your culture? Who are these people that are shaping who you're becoming, the kind of woman that you're becoming? You were once called a woman of prayer, but today we are not seeing that. Why? Because you have stayed with some certain environment for too long until it has become okay. <laughs> you are very prayerful. Now, nowadays, you are very gossipful. Unconsciously, the culture and the environment of where we are as we move affects us. And that is why I believe God used to keep company. These people with a, with a pillar of crown, just to remind them. 
in case they forget that I am your God. I am still with you even in this. Even as you walk, I am still with you. Some of you, you have gone through painful moments. Until you begin to say, Ay, church, what wameokoka? Eh, wameokoka. Vile tu family enyu muna kosanaga na bado njini watu wa family. Eh, hata kwa kanisa tunakosanaga. Lakini pia sisi ni mwili wa kristo. Na kwa mwili wa kristo, kuna watu, viatu, na kadhalika. Wana sana. So when you meet them, don't judge God because of men. Don't judge the faithfulness of God because of what men have done to you. That they alienated me. They no longer do this for me. There are things that people are laughing about in your life today. But soon they are the ones who will give their testimony on your behalf. And that is why Moses kept his... I'm trying to imagine. Millions of people are looking up to you. And these people begin to ask you, Kukianza Kudoka. You know, people, people are very interesting. Human beings, we are very interested. We have the gift of forgetting. We have that. In fact, Kenyans, we have been blessed with the gift of forgetting. And that is why Kenya has been ranked one of the, optimis, the most optimistic countries. You know why? We keep on electing the same kind of leaders. Generation after generation, expecting different results. Eh watu wakasema hawa watu wako na imani. Eh hawa watu wako na imani. And then when things begin to go south, you know what you say. Sita <laughs> kusemea. So Moses is here and all he has is his relationship with God and his knowledge of God. Beloved in your moving forward, your relationship with God and you knowing God for you, that God will be revealed to you in a personal way, is what will keep you on the track going forward. Because in that very track, you will find challenges. Why did God put a pillar of cloud during the day? Because it was hot. Egypt in the desert. It was hot. There were no umbrellas. And then, it came to, and, and when, you read, when you read the history of that journey, it says that they left Egypt in a rush, that they were not able to make izim kateza kuka sikumingi. They were not able to make those kind of bread. <clears throat> so, you begin to sit down and, like most of us do, we have boardroom meetings with you, yourself, and I. And then you begin to question. Is it really worth it for me to continue waiting? Angalia watoto walimaliza form 4 2016. Wanaolewa kama mimi nawaambia na believe God. Look at people that have have attained what wamefanya diploma. Mimi niko na first class honors ya masters ya biochemistry technology. <laughs> Wamepata job mi bado. Beloved, when you come to that place, it will take the knowledge. And one of the things that God has really spoken to my heart during, during this conference, he desires to reveal himself on a personal level. That God desires people to move forward. Because I was seeing people stuck in some places. Some, some people have been stuck because of heartaches. And some of these heartaches are deep heartaches. Wengine ni disappointments. Wengine ni delays. But God is saying to you, do you know me enough to say like Psalm 46 says, that I will stand still and see the salvation of God. Not I will stand still and pray while I check. Pray while I check. You know, there are some prayers to Rafanyangaza Kupima Mungu. And because the Bible says that he remembers that we are dust, yani he understands 
Because he's the one who created us. Kuna prayer ingine tuna prayer ya emergency. You know you have believed God. God in the morning. You said God I'm believing you. You're providing that 50,000 shillings. You're providing. Unangalia clock yumefika 11. Deadline ni sanani. Unanza kusema sijui ni pigia nani. Father you, you send men to us as angels. As helpers. Unanza kutafta helper. Yet, the Bible says, be still. In stillness, in a manisha, it is active stillness. Why you focus on God and get lost in him? Unambia God, it is either you or you. Because that is where the children of Israel were. And they were asking Moses. Imagine Moses. Unatutoa kwenye tukona food, tukona nyumba. Hakuna mtu alitusumbua, atukuzushiwa. Una tuambia tukuje kwa wilderness. Ona hawa sewa shafika. Unaona zile chariotu wako nazo. Mikuwa nzata viatu zangu zilikuwa zime, zime katika. And they are complaining. And complaining. Why? Because they had already forgotten the things that God had done. And today, I want you to remind yourself. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we have. Probably the children of Israel remembered this pillar of cloud and the and the fire by night is evidence enough that God is with us. So they remember to cry out to him. But after crying out to God, they still forgot. And Moses was telling them, when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will Father, Father, over. I will be still. I will be still. The fear and the cry of the children of Israel was because they trusted God. But their complaint was because they had lost faith in him. Just a week later, 430 years God had been faithful. And just a week in the wilderness. What is this thing that is making you think that you cannot move from where you are? What is this thing that to you looks like a real big mountain that God cannot be able to do it? Is it God settling your family? Is it God providing for you something that looks so weird and out of this world? As the Bible says that the things that we see are temporal, but the things that we do not see are eternal. There are things that God has done in our lives that are of much higher value than the things that we keep on crying for. And in this journey of going forward, <laughs> we are not going forward because we are strong. We are going forward because we have God with us. And we are assured of him walking with us every step of the way. So only a week into the wilderness and the children of Israel were complaining. They had forgotten the faithfulness of 430 years. How can I forget your faithfulness? How can I forget your goodness, Lord? How can I forget your faithfulness? Oh, it is God. It's all about God. It will always be God. 
if that will be the story of your life, then you will always move forward. When you know that God, I feel overwhelmed. Not that you will not feel overwhelmed, you will. The children of Israel were feeling overwhelmed because they were seeing the enemies advancing to, towards them. You're seeing every day, this situation is right before your eyes. We have seen the barren being given children. We have seen them that are suffering cancer being healed. We have seen God raise them that were seemingly dying. So this God can be counted faithful. This God, we can say that God, even if I am going to crawl, I am going to make progress. I'm not going to stop at where I am. I will cry, but with my tears, I will make progress forward. I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be limited. Some of us have been limited because of the things we are exposing ourselves to. The stories that you are hearing. Last week. Change neighbors. Change, change friends. I remember one time when one of our sons, the father was going into a brain surgery. And during prayer, we had encouraged him and encouraged him. And then one person came and said, by the way, even me, my mom had brain surgery. But I could survive. Tulimzika. So ataka tunumbe baba yako. Tuna expect anything. I pray that we shall begin to have crazy faith. Crazy faith that will believe God at all odds. Because the situation present with the children of Israel would have caused Moses to say, enye muna make sense. Sindu hizi chari yotenyata mina ziona. But what did Moses tell them? He told them, do not be afraid. Fear not, stand still. And today, that is what I want you to encourage a sister. You will tell them, fear not. That when a sister comes to you with a marital issue, that the husband, ame, akosasa na mpango wakando wa sita, mwambia ni sawa tu, wendi uko kwa nyumba, ni sawa, akitaka ata ongeze wa saba. Situ kona magoti, tuende kwa, kwa, kwa ground. Lakini sasa wakuja koko, eh, Hey, um say, Ebu, Ebu, you want him to born again? You forget. I say, my Baba, excuse me, I'm going to chase Osama. Hey, will you make a Will you make a suffer? No, Jama. Ebu, come next show. Come next show. And then you begin to to set out revenge. I tell you the truth, that revenge will flop. It is better for us to learn that as we move forward, our battles are surrendered to God. And at times you look like a stupid person. Let me tell you. But in that stupidity, there is wisdom. Because the Bible says, even the end of the wisest man of the earth does not be wisdom, your God. So God is the one who set up this particular situation. That is why I will encourage someone here that you're going through a certain kind of turmoil or a storm. Stop praying for God to stop the storm. Begin to pray, God, I want you to show me the purpose of this storm for my life. The purpose for this storm for my marriage, for my, for my career, for my ministry, I want you to, to begin to understand. Because some of us, if God will take us through any other route, and I do a land, so I have learned in life that God takes us through a route where he knows we will learn the most. Anajoeni kichwangumwa kwambe wende pale utaenda. So, ataleta mahayena. Unasema God hapa nitapita. Lakini unaenda tu uki, uki believe God. Then you see God shut the hyena's mouth. Then when you read the other side unaanza kutestify ya wase hapana who God is faithful. He shut the mouth of hyenas and he caused me to be able to go through. I pray that we shall have ladies that will be crazy enough to believe God for their generations. I was listening to a certain clip just a few moments ago. And this lady says how uh, the, the, the devil agents are everywhere in churches today. And it's, she says we don't have a problem because so many of the Christians don't have a prayer life. They live different in church than at home. Integrity is what you do when we don't see you. Hapa kila mtu ni moholi, kila mtu ni msafi, mtakatifu. But when you're alone, ume, ume, umelewa na pornography, ni masauti tu tunasikia. Wana swe sana? Eh. 
I pray that today you shall make a decision to go forward. Yeah. That in that situation, you will tell yourself that God, I want to move forward. And this lady was saying that they look for intercessors and praise and worship teams. They cause praise and worship teams to, to compete. Who is better than the other? Nani ali bakia tukali leo kushinda mwingine? Nani ali kwa na hairstyle ime... Hallelujah. So some of these warfare that you see amongst yourselves, it is not the devil. It, it is not the, the neighbor. It is the, the enemy trying to sow seeds of strife. And why do they, do they seek for the people of the ministry of intercession? And actually, let me encourage you that the ministry of intercession, akuna, akuna watu specific wamepewa, all saints, the Bible says, that the spirit of God helps who spirit wa mungu. Si tumepewa ni rafkia kila mmoja wetu mwenye meokoka. So kwa nini wewe skuile otuwa na itishonga maombi church. Prayer meeting utoke angi. Eh, yes, yes, eh. Why don't you come? Nasa miyo ni ama intercessor. Mi, mi si intercessor. Siko kwa list ya intercessors. So uko kwa list ya gani? Wana asifiwe. Every child of God. She'll be able to learn to do that. And she says that in the kingdom of, of, of darkness, they know that the intercessors are the walls of the church. And the worshippers are the paint on it. So imagine a prayerless church. Does it have walls? Does it? Sasa irangi ko wapi? Look at your neighbor, tell them, go forward. Our relationship with God and our knowledge of God are two key things that will help us move forward. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, is the third thing that will help us go forward in the direction that God would want. When the, people, when the children of Israel were told to stand still, This is what God will tell each and every one of us in the moment of crisis. In the moment, God is not telling us to go forward. Um, when sugar was 120, he's telling you to go forward when it is 450. Because you're a child of the, of the kingdom. But now every day you have been complaining. That is why money has been running away from you. It reaches your door and then it hears your complaint. It says, okay, this one does not need me. Let me go to another believer who has called me. Everything has ears, even money. Do not retreat. Do not retreat. There are some people, things have gotten so hard that you have actually preferred to go back to the default settings. That you are making progress. But as you made progress, you realized, hey, this, this walk of faith is hard. I think it is better for me to just go to where I was. Where were you? You are, you are part of the people who are considered not serious in church. Because the moment you begin to be serious, you begin to see things are not going as easy as before. You cannot go to class five and expect being given to the class four. I remember one of my nephews saying, hey auntie, hey junior high, hey junior secondary ni secondary bad. And I asked him why. Tunapawa vitu za form two to, and I asked him, I remember the time we were saying about junior secondary. The kids were boasting. And Miniko said, so why are you complaining now? You're actually in secondary. The teachers are confirming your prophecy. So move forward. One as if you. Stop complaining. Move forward. Focus ahead. And today, as, as I come to just share with us, 
at the first day that God is intentional with your life in this conference. God is very intentional. And I pray that each and every one of you, that by the time we come to Sunday, even if you'll attend one session, that you will take whatever it is that God intended for you. One as if you That God, I've heard you, I've, I've read about this story of Moses, Kutoka Sunday School, but today I receive it again. And I say, Lord, where I have, you know we are a living sacrifice. Living sacrifices, kama ushawa ichinja kuku, when you step on it, and you've not cut its throat, what happens? Living sacrifice. It is not yet dead. So living sacrifice ziko natabia kutoka nga kwa alta. So jifunze kukahapo. Ambia mungu, aki ni uchungu tu mungu, laki naka, naka. Mimi ni funguwe, wewe uongezeke. Mimi. Iyo kupunguka ni ngumu, wewe uongezeke, uongezeke, baba uongezeke sana, mimi. When Moses was telling these people, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He had, there are three things I've, I've spoken about. Your relationship with God, your knowledge of God, personal knowledge, and your relationship with the Spirit of God. Moses was able to talk about the salvation. That was faith. Fear not, stand still, and see. Yet the enemies were coming. He did not know how God will do it, but he knew that God will make a way. He knew that somehow this God that I've walked with all these years, and that should be our encouragement. When a lady comes to you and they are giving up hope, do not worry them. Some of us are not going to be able to do it. Oh, 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 Tell them, let us be still. And this God that we have believed all these years, we will see his salvation. We will see his salvation because he is a faithful God. <laughs> Moses, I've not talked of anything I prepared in my notes. But Moses, is, is in this place and then God talks to Moses. The reason why it is important for you to have a personal relationship with God because kukidoka atako familia yako it is you that God would want to speak to. Because it, some of us here we are last bonds. lakini sisi ndio priests wa family zetu. So vitu zikiaribika you'll wonder why is my life always under fire. It is because it is you that God spoke to. God made a covenant with Moses. And that is why after everything has been done, after all the complaints have been made by the children of Israel in their millions, he still has the energy to come to God. And God is asking him, because it can be discouraging. And let me tell you, if people, human beings are dangerous people, we forget Na tukisa hotu na kuwagana madharao sana. We forget all, you are sacrificed for your school fees. Unawambia, but siku kuomba? Siwendo ulilipa? They will tell you that. Mtu watakufa kwenyu, you tell them I expected for you to. Sema mili kuwa busy. And by the way, people, don't be the kind of person that is gifted in sending people condolences and money and uh, it is well to your neighbor. Wait until it comes home. We will also send it is well 
condolences and our money. Human beings forget. Jesus at the cross, he was only with his mother, a certain lady that accompanied the mother and one disciple. Wale watu walikuwa kisema aki, hey, Jesus, si wewe ni mtu aje, yani umeniponya, si moyo tu, ata na mwili. You have cleansed none of them were at Calvary. So please note that in your seasons of testing, at times, if not most of the time, God will make sure people are not around. So that you concentrate on your test. You will try and meet up with someone for prayer and be aki ni meshikika job. Leo mdosi yuko on my case. Mungina na kwambia, leo mindo na pika sapa. Shuali unapika sapa na bile mina kunid. Makosa si yao. It is God setting you up. And if you're not careful, you'll get so bitter, my friend. A season came in my life where I could not send a text to anyone. I'm looking at my life, I'm asking God, okay, I'm not so sure. I know you are with me. But I'm not sure where I am. But as I continue to stay with God, there are times I would go to prayer and there's no words to pray. I would just weep there for hours. But after that season comes to an end, then I begin to realize that God, if you would have sent people my way, I would have been distracted. So God will be very intentional. Some of you, you will lose friends after this meeting. Do when the forward, kuna watu goda tatoko life yako. So be prepared. Nunua handkerchief, ikiwezeka na towel. Mapema mapema, mina kusaidia. Wana aswe sana. There are people that God will move away, not because anakuchukia. Na uyo mtu ataha na fault. It is because God wants you to get this thing that is, because God is doing a quick work, ladies. And God is intending to use ladies in what he's doing in the end time. And if God is intending to do, and he's doing a quick work, believe you me, ata kuseti, ata kunyosha. Kila sande umekukimba, nitumie, nitumie, enayo nifinyange tunapenda. One as few. And God says, okay, my child, here I am. I am the potter. You are the clay. Ukie kuwapo unanza kusema, eh, God, I could be serious. Some of you, you will lose your relationships. You're not yet married. You will lose your, if you're in a relationship, yenye you see the intended man to be your husband, you will lose it. Ata ukini bind na kusikia, utai lose. You will lose it. Bwana asifiwe. Look at your neighbor and tell them, move forward. Move forward. We must crave for the help of God only. That is what Moses was telling the children of Israel. Just stand still and see his salvation. And in closing, I'll just say that when God was telling Moses, why are you crying to me? It's because his walk with Moses was so intimate that he was, he was wondering, Moses, has this environment of these people made you forget how, how we play our game? Has it made you forget? And God is reminding some ladies here, have you forgotten where you were almost getting ashamed and I rescued you? Have you forgotten where you almost died? I remember a point in my life, many years back, I was sick and I was given the wrong medication. Wapendo, I was on a wheelchair. For a whole two months, I was on a wheelchair. I cannot go to lead worship. Hapo ndo unajuaga, wewe si invincible. Atisa nani ata lead worship? Mungu wako na watu. Angalia jirani yako mambia, mungu wako na wase. Wana sifiwe. 
But out of that, God was able to rescue me. One of the doctors came and realized that the medication I was being given and they were wondering, why am I getting weak? And why am I not getting stronger? Because the sickness in haikuwa ya kunifanya nikwe wiki hivo. Then they realized and now they had to wash it out. <laughs> and I had to be given new blood. It was that bad. And you know life is in the blood. The introduction of the new blood did a few things to my life. But I thank God that I'm alive. That I'm alive to give this testimony. God is reminding some of you. What is this that has umekuwa mawapi? God anataka kukukuamua. Na kukuamua in a tractor. Personal relationship. Some of you, your prayer lives will never, must never remain the same. Because in your going forward, there is a grace of intercession that you'll be given so that you're able to move forward in that wavelength. And as I said, our paces are different. Some of us that have, have learned to eat everything Monday to Sunday, you're wicked, you're a woman, you're a, 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 a whole week. You're eating Sunday to Sunday. There are things that God is going to put within you. Sa, some hunger for him. That you'll just find yourself desiring to fast and seek his face. Not because you're praying for a house. But you just want to know him. That is the moving forward that God is talking about. It is more spiritual than physical. It is ziku toka hapa unenda Canada. You're going to Canada, you're moving forward to Canada, Pano, Trenda to Kayole. Lakini maisha yako ya maombi lazima change. Bona si I want us to stand on our feet. And I want you to lift your hands and begin to, to just call on the name of God. I don't know where you're stuck. It might be emotional, it might be spiritual, it might be a heartache, it might be a loss. Today, the Lord is telling you, stand still and see my salvation. And as God is saying that to you, he desires that you know him. I pray that there shall be such a hunger for God in this house. I pray that there shall be such a fanning of the flame of the Holy Spirit. A desire, Lord, a hunger within us. Lord, I hunger for you. I hunger for your word. That we will stay in the place of your word. Father God, some of us, there are things, other things, our children, our commitments to marriage and business and finances has moved us away. When you blessed us, Lord, we, we forgot, my Father, and today we desire that we move forward, O oh God, that we so higher with you, O oh God. Labira dona makata legana nosa. Agida dola maseke de dola mara.